Yellow rust is one of the most important diseases of wheat worldwide and can significantly reduce yields. When I went to do a PhD at the John Inner Centre, my project was about plant disease and, and climate change. So I had to find an area within that that was going to be interesting. And for me, it was important to, to work that, with something that was directly applicable to industry. We know that climate change is likely to cause an increase in temperature, um, but it will also uh, cause more fluctuation in temperature. And what we don't understand so much is how that fluctuation will affect disease resistance. And that is the aim of our research. We're getting a taste right now of the sort of unusual conditions that I think we're going to have to get used to more often. And so, you know, farming is, is uh, needing to be more resilient, more agile, and planning for the unexpected. Resistance is definitely affected by the environment. So some of the work I was doing was looking at how temperature affected resistance. So there is evidence that there are yellow rust resistance genes that work better at higher or lower temperatures. So my project started off with a resistance gene known as YR36 that was thought to convey better resistance at higher temperatures. But my study quickly showed that actually high temperature wasn't important at all and it was more the transition from high temperatures to lower temperatures and therefore we established that fluctuations in temperature were important in resistance whereas previously people had thought that just exposure to an average temperature over a long time was what would be important. So we can control uh, diseases using uh, chemical fungicides which are very effective but there are increasing concerns about the environment and there is a requirement really to reduce the amount of inputs we put on crops. We think that through breeding we can uh, get a better control of diseases in the longer term. With breeding you take two varieties, you cross them together and you need to continually screen for resistance through the generations. Genetic diversity does exist within our UK breeding pool but one of the things that we like to do is take novel sources of resistance from land races or more exotic varieties. So these will contain resistances that aren't within our breeding program. So they're good because it improves the genetic diversity, but they're very hard to integrate into, into wheat because everything else about them is off pace with yield. So we're interested in the resistance genes, but not necessarily everything else that comes with them. What we're trying to achieve is to breed uh, wheat varieties that, are, uh, that perform well in different environments. Uh, and it may be that one size doesn't fit all. It may be that we require more locally adapted varieties uh, to achieve success. We think going forward that there are opportunities for collaboration which involve uh, working with other scientists who've got key data sets from the field and who perhaps are also operating or developing weather and climate models that make simulations of the future. We need to know what the spread of possible futures are around weather and climate so that we can build that uncertainty into the decision making that the industry needs to, needs to make. And we feel that it's really necessary that um, the University of East Anglia, WeatherQuest, John Innes Centre come together to work on this problem of the impact of weather and climate on agriculture with a keen eye on what the needs of practitioners, the needs of farmers are, um, so that we actually make ourselves more resilient going forward to the inevitable threats and challenges that variable weather and climate poses.